Hi, welcome to J-West Engineering. Today I'm going to be showing the adjustability of the bias springs on the Renshift performance shifter. I'll be measuring the different setups for the bias springs and showing you the different force levels and comparing that with the stock 915 shifter. The bias springs are used to return the shifter to the center plane when you're in neutral either from the left or from the right. If you let go of the shifter, it'll spring back to center, helping to find that gate, helping to ease shifting, and helping to prevent miss shifts, especially when downshifting. The first thing I'm going to do is take my scale here and measure the tension, measure the force required to move this the step factory 915 shifter into the fifth reverse gate i'm going to put my finger on the reverse lockout pulled so that's not a factor and then move the shifter with my spring with my uh force scale comes out to right about five pounds to get it moving and about five and a half pounds for one inch of deflection so there's about five and a half is deflected about one inch. Okay, now that we've measured the stock, stock shifter for comparison, we're going to set up the wren shift with the heaviest weight spring with the short stick. So in order to set that up, we'll use two of the shim washers that come in with your wrench shift in the hardware kit. We'll put two of those on the right hand side with the gold spring. And I'm going to put one on the left hand side also with the gold spring. We can do both of these measurements at the same time. The right and left sides don't affect each other. So we can Kill time by doing those both at once. Speed up the process a bit. We need to screw this down all the way to set the tension. So the stiffer springs are on the right hand side, which will affect left hand movement. At, on the stick and vice versa. Okay, got those set. We'll do the heavier one first. This will be the two springs, I mean the two shims with the gold spring. Okay, zeroed out. We'll start pulling. That ends up at about six pounds when it starts moving. Move it around an inch. We end up at about nine pounds. About nine pounds with the inch of movement. Now we'll do the other side, which is a single shim washer with the gold spring. That's about seven pounds with one inch movement. About seven pounds. We'll remove those.
take a magnet and fish the shim out. We're going to go to gold spring with no shim. And blue spring with two shims. So gold spring with no shim. About four and a half pounds. Come over to the other side, blue spring with two shims. So a little over four pounds. Okay. And we'll continue reducing down. This time we're going to do a blue spring with one shim and a blue spring with no shims. Blue spring with one shim. A little over three pounds. And just a straight blue spring. No shims. About two and a half. I've reconfigured the rim shift with the longer stick. So this stick is two inches longer than the stock length stick. The stock length stick places the knob at the same positioning as your factory shifter. This one is two inches longer along this distance right here along this angle. I've pre also pre-configured it to the, our original Wrench shift configuration, so the heaviest springs will go down, step down in the same order, starting with the gold spring with two shim washers 
on the right hand side, gold spring with a single washer on the left hand side. We'll apply our force here. And the heaviest configuration, gold spring, two shim washers gives us approximately seven pounds. Move to the opposite side. And we move that one and we end up with approximately five pounds. Gold spring with a single. Take the lid off here and we'll step down. So the next two will be the, the final gold spring. Gold spring with no shim washers, just the gold spring. That's the configuration that shifter gets delivered. If you don't change anything, that's where how it'll be. And then on the opposite side, we'll go the heaviest of the blue, blue with two shim washers. Take the cap off of there. Pull the springs out. Get a magnet to push out our washers. Push out the washers on the other side. So the button drop step back down inside. And then this time we're going to do the heavier configuration. Uh, no shim washer. Gold spring on the right hand side. And then step down slightly lighter will be two shim washers. And the other blue spring, the one I didn't drop, on this side. Tighten these down evenly. And we'll get a measurement on these. So. Okay, we have the gold spring with no shims. Some load on that one. And that comes out to about three and a half pounds. Swing around here to the other side. Blue spring with two shim washers in place. And that gives us approximately three pounds as we go through some motion there. Three pounds. Push my blue spring that I dropped off the floor for our final configuration, which will be two blue springs, one on each side. And that'll be blue spring with a single shim washer on the right, and the lightest configuration of all will be a blue spring, no shim washers on the left. See just how light that gets. Take the washers out. I'm going to place one washer on the right hand side along with the blue spring. No washers on the left with a blue spring.
Okay, tighten that one down. See if we got very positive return to the center, even with the very lightest configuration. Snaps right back. Very clean, very nice. And then we'll measure these. This is blue with one. And that comes out to about two and a half pounds. Other side, lightest configuration, blue with no shims. And we're right in the neighborhood of two pounds for that one. Okay. And then I'll do one more set just to bring it full circle. If you have upgraded to the wren shift, but you've driven with the stock shifter for many, many years, and you just happen to really appreciate the feedback you get from that stock shifter, that's what you really want. And we can set that up. We'll do a very similar configuration. So we'll set it up with one shim washer and a gold spring on the left hand side of the shifter, which will give us that five pounds, very close to the factory 915 gating for the uh, fifth and reverse gate. And then over on the right hand side, we're going to remove the button down underneath the uh, springs and shims. We want to take this completely out. We're going to run without a spring. And if we run without a spring, we want to make sure we take the button out of the shifter. We don't want that just sitting in there loose if we don't have any spring. And so show you here that you can really configure the RIN shift to anything you want as far as configuration. Uh, very, very adjustable, including mimicking the stock shifter, but with much higher precision, much more uh, positive feel. And so now first, second, third, fourth, it just stays where you put it, just like stock 915. And then you want to go to fifth, Reverse that has the spring gate against it. So there you go. Many different configurations of the wrench shift. And now you know in hard numbers exactly what you're going to, you're going to achieve with the different spring setups.